here in southern Idaho. We're pretty lucky living in the backdrop of the Boise foothills. Yeah, and did you know that at the base of those foothills are some pretty incredible geological features formed thousands of years ago? And the features that set us apart from the rest of the country, even the world. Beneath the southern Idaho foothills is granite and lots of it. This granite body, the Idaho batholith, that covers around 10,000 square miles across Idaho, was actually formed from a subduction zone. So if, if you think of subduction, it's when one plate is subducting under the other plate. And we often know about that in terms of mountain formation, but it also creates molten lava that solidifies to create granite, which is the source of heat for the hot springs we see across Idaho and our geothermal system in Boise. That heat called hot soil by some. It takes about 30,000 years for it to get down to where the geothermal aquifer is sitting right now. That's 2,200 feet below us. And in that 30,000 years, the water slowly picks up other minerals, which causes it to slowly heat up. By the time that it gets to that point, that's where it hits the 180 degrees. About 30 years after Boise became a city in the late 1800s, one Boisean decided to tap into that hot water for commercial and residential use. C.W. Moore was a developer for the uh, Boise area back in the 1800s. He did a lot with the cold water. And so he decided to start utilizing the hot water and the first place that he pumped it over to was the natatorium. He was the first person who had this imaginative idea to use geothermal to heat a building. And from that point, he figured that he could use it in homes as a hot water source. So then he started taking it to his homes and then selling it to his neighbors as well. In 1892, the Boise Warm Springs Water District was born. Lewis says it's the oldest geothermal district in the country. And we do believe that might be the oldest one in the world. By about 1895, they were piping it to most houses over here off Warm Springs. It made it a lot cheaper to where most people could actually afford to enjoy the luxuries in life. The water coming from an aquifer hundreds of feet below the surface. Before the district was even here, there was actually a marsh and it was automatically discharging water off of it. So if we were to put the water back into the aquifer, it will pop up somewhere else in Boise. It wasn't until the 1970s during the oil crisis that the conversation of how to make geothermal energy use more widespread began to heat up. Oil and gas prices were going through the roof. So um, the city of Boise was looking for more affordable forms of energy. In the early 1980s, the state drilled two wells near the Capitol building to heat the Capitol Mall complex. Idaho was the first state capital in the U.S. to be heated by geothermal energy. So we looked into that as uh, a, an alternative form of energy and um, drilled the, um, the well bores to tap into it, constructed the system and began operation in 1983. The system is just such a simple design. Water comes up the well bore, it, we borrow it for its heat, and then we put it right back down into the exact same aquifer that we got it from at Julia Davis Park. So we are not using the water, we're just borrowing it for its heating properties, and then we put it back in the same aquifer. In 1988, the Veterans Association began using geothermal to heat its complex of 22 buildings near Fort Boise. Today, the city of Boise operates more than 20 miles of pipeline that heat more than 6 million square feet including Jump, City Hall, the YMCA, and several buildings on Boise State's campus. It was initially set up because it was affordable, but that's also allowed us to have a great source of reducing emissions for, for a number of decades, and we continue to be able to do that to help meet our climate goals. It's pretty cool. It's pretty yeah. fascinating. I never actually knew how it worked. Well, in 2021, the city of Boise, they set a goal to become carbon neutral by the year 2050. And that includes all city of Boise government facilities operating with clean electricity by 2030.